I'm EXPLOSION! <laughs> Welcome back. Today we're reacting to another Kurtzgesagd video. What if we detonated all nuclear bombs at once? All of them. I have a theory that there would probably be some type of explosion. I'm EXPLOSION! Okay. But on a serious note, I think the biggest question is, what kind of impact would that have on humanity? And my theory going into this, my honest theory, not my smart aleck one, well, it depends how they were detonated. Scenario one, they're all put into a big pile. Boom! Probably not much happens. I mean, yeah, it would be really bad. There'd be uh, radioactive ash blowing through the currents. There'd be a big crater and a bunch of radiation there. Probably not all that bad on the grand scheme of things you know we'd probably see like a little bit more cancer globally but probably not much else i'm guessing other than the local area that was in directly impacted scenario two if we spread them out everywhere and then detonated them all at once um or within a very small amount of time that would have a much worse impact because now the radioactive ash and everything that's going to be spread basically throughout the globe and it's going to have a much 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 deeper impact the second scenario would be a lot worse and would have a much greater impact on us. Would it be in an extinction level event? I don't think so. Humanity would probably survive, although it would set us back by a lot. Many of our viewers have asked us a very serious question. What if we made a big pile of bombs and exploded every nuclear weapon in the world all at once? It's an important question Strangely for enough, science. We couldn't find a good source to answer this question to our <laughs> satisfaction. So we gathered together a few scientists to calculate what would happen and uh -huh. find an answer to this extremely important scientific problem once and for all. Currently, there are 15,000 nuclear weapons on Earth. That's insane. In Russia, both have around 7,000. Well, Look France, at that. China, the UK, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea own around one why do we need that many of them i understand i understand that each country wants to protect their national interest and being a nuclear power brings a lot of weight to the global table but why do we need fifteen thousand nuclear bombs i mean what are we planning on destroying here the whole entire world because that's basically the outcome if a nuclear war breaks out look at the u.s and russia they have so much more than everyone else it's so ridiculous i mean what the heck and russia of course got all the nuclear weapons from the former soviet union when they dissolved so they just are sitting on this ginormous stockpile and the u.s well, the U.S. is the U.S. We all know how the United States' military spending is. ...thousand between them. But how much destructive power is this really? Let's try to put these numbers into perspective. Kurzgesagd. I think I'm finally pronouncing it properly now. Five hundred cities or urban areas with at least one hundred thousand inhabitants. Okay. Some are bigger than others, so we'll assume that on average we need three nuclear bombs to completely wipe out one city. This means Great. we could destroy every single city on planet Earth with our nuclear arsenal, killing more than three billion people, roughly half of humanity, in an instant. Wow. And we'd still have one thousand five hundred nuclear weapons left. See, why do we need this many? Would call overkill. So we can say with confidence that Definitely we can nuclear weapons and they can do a lot of damage. But what if we make a huge pile of all 15,000 bombs and pull the trigger? Let's drop our nuclear pile in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, just to show nature who's boss. <laughs> what has nature ever done for us? <laughs> a warhead's piled haphazardly fit into a small warehouse. A typical U.S. warhead has the power of 200,000 tons of TNT. So 15,000 so warheads much. would be the equivalent of 3 billion tons of TNT. Oh my god. For scale, this is, is there the even that much TNT? Manhattan ...with every building and skyscraper using stacks of TNT. What? The closest thing we can compare to the energy gathered here is a volcano. One of the deadliest volcanic eruptions in recorded history took place in 1883 on the island of Krakatoa. Humanity's destructive power just... 70 of the it's scary. The surrounding archipelago was destroyed, killing tens of thousands of people. Its effects were felt around the yep. world for days after the event. That was a big Our one. Our nuclear pile contains 15 times the energy of the Krakatoa volcanic eruption. 
so let's finally push the button. In my head, I think I may have slightly misunderestimated the destructive power of all of our nuclear weapons piled together. I still think that my original theory on this is not an extinction level event still holds true, but I think it's going to have a little bit more of an impact than I had initially thought. Three, two, one. In a second, a fireball 50 kilometers across vaporizes everything in its way and creates a blast wave that flattens 3,000 square kilometers of forest. Wow. Every living thing within 250 kilometers will start to burn. The, the bird! will be heard literally around the world as the pressure wave circles the earth tens of times over the next few weeks. So you would hear that pressure wave numerous times. Are catapulted into the atmosphere. The mushroom cloud reaches the outer reaches of the stratosphere, pushing up against space itself. After things have calmed down, a small crater, about 10 kilometers across, a small is crater. the center of the worst wildfires the planet has seen in millennia, spreading throughout South America, burning down forests and cities alike. Yeah, take that nature. Now, the unpleasant part begins. Extremely Because the rest wasn't unpleasant enough. ...things very quickly, and a large area several kilometers around the crater is now uninhabitable, as is everywhere for hundreds But of course, of that's the danger of nuclear weapons. It's not the explosion. While that is great and crazy, the planet. It's the radiation. The of radioactive material in the environment doubles worldwide, which still isn't civilization ending, but we may see more cancer for a while. A portion of the particles will flow to the edge of space for years and cause a nuclear winter that could lower global temperatures by a few degrees for a few years. So a big impact, but was a few degrees, you know, America that's... And especially Brazil. The Amazon would have a large impact, history, more than you'd think it would, I would imagine. Human life will go on. Okay. okay, so I was right. What if we explode more nuclear weapons? Let's we don't have any more. Humanity decided to mine every bit of uranium on Earth and oh, build as many nuclear bombs as possible. Of course. At current usage, it's estimated that there are around 35 million tons of what uranium is that, Big in ben? Earth's crust. Enough to power human civilization for over 2,000 years, or to build millions of nuclear warheads. All that uranium is only enough to power us for 2,000 years? I would have imagined that uranium would be able to power us for a lot longer than that. Not gonna lie, that's a surprise to me. For the sake of argument, let's say we create a pile with a yield of 10 billion Hiroshima bombs, which makes up a cube three kilometers high that contains roughly the energy of the asteroid impact that ended the age of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Except, it's also nuclear. That might do it. <laughs> oh boy. Three, two, one. Our pile explodes in a oh. fireball stretching so high into the sky that, that bird's it's visible gone. from half of South America, with so much Jeez. power that the ground just splashes like water, forming a crater what the heck? Bedrock on the scale of whole mountain ranges is vaporized in an instant, while thousands of tons of material is catapulted away. And the ground just basically turns to water. Space. Some leaves well, are liquid, forever, while most of it comes raining down as hot Jeez. burning debris that heats up the atmosphere to oven-like temperatures, killing most big animals and causing firestorms all over the world. The Earth's oh, crust yeah. rings like a bell, struck by global earthquakes stronger than anything in recorded history, decimating cities around the world, while hurricane-force winds flatten every single tree in South America, and wildfires consume the continent. Wow. The abundance of hydrocarbons in the Amazon burn to form ash, are cast into the atmosphere, darting the sky and keeping sunlight from reaching the surface, dropping temperatures to near freezing worldwide. <laughs> the ensuing global winter yeah. lasts for decades and results in the extinction of every large animal species, humans included. Adam do also mentioned that every corner of the planet is covered with radioactive fallout, but at this point, it doesn't matter that much anymore. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really this matter. Everything's dead. Event. And the Fallout helmet. The International Space Love that game, by the way. Enjoy a great view for a while, but it's not unlikely that the spray of rocks blast into orbit will destroy the station. Well, they'd run out of life support. Or in submarines deep below the eventually, ocean right? May survive the longest before they exhaust their food supplies and have to venture out for more. They'll find the world mm -hmm. a charred, freezing, radioactive wasteland. The planet itself doesn't care wow. after just a few million years. Hundred years later, a thousand. And life is thriving, arguably even more so a few than millions were around. Yeah. 
if intelligent life emerges again, it might be able to work out what happened. When they study geology, they'll find a bizarre and very thin layer of rock covering the entire world, enriched in radioactive elements like uranium and the other nasty things it decays <laughs> to, mixed with rare earth metals and plastics that humans used. Yeah. They would probably Rubber be very, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be so confused. Like, what the heck happened? You know, the thing is, they'd probably think that it was some natural geological or astronomical event. They probably would never imagine that we did it to ourselves. <laughs> well, the good news is we could only do that once. The bad news is we would only need to do it once. What a video. What a thought-provoking video. I mean, that's just ridiculous to think about. What if we took all of the uranium and made nuclear weapons out of them? It kind of shed some light on the importance of making sure that we're fully established with renewable fuels. Nuclear is a clean energy, it's a safe energy, but it will not last forever. Now, 2,000 years is probably going to be a lot longer than anyone alive today has to worry about. Unless, uh, you know, biological immortality actually becomes a commercially viable and scientifically proven thing in the next few years, which eh, it's possible but unlikely. But as a species, we need to stop looking at our problems in terms of our life, in terms of our children's lives. We need to look at our problems in terms of generations. We need to be looking into the far future. 2,000 years is enough time to work at perfecting our renewable energy. It's not going to last us forever. Anyway, I really enjoyed this one. It's quite the scenario to think about and really get you thinking, especially when they do the illustration about how many nuclear bombs there are and their distribution throughout the countries. But that's it for today, so thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have any questions, any suggestions, or just want to share some more knowledge, please leave a comment. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe. It helps me more than you know. I hope you have such a wonderful day. An EXPLOSION!